Okay, welcome to video six of this nine part series. We're down the home stretch. In the last video, we talked about the Bretton Woods Conference, the establishment of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank. And in it, we showed you a quote from one of the one of the key orchestrators of this conference, the British economist John Maynard Keynes, where he said, I felt that the leading central banks would never voluntarily relinquish the then existing forms of gold standard, and I did not desire a catastrophe sufficiently violent to shake them off involuntarily. The only practical hope lay, therefore, in a gradual evolution in the forms of a managed world currency taking the existing gold standard as a starting point. So there was going to be a systematic way to attack the pegging of currency to the gold. So you're probably familiar that on August 15th, 1971, President Nixon signed an executive order declaring that the, the U.S. would no longer redeem paper dollars for gold, right? So the reasons he gave were to one, protect United States exports and you're going to see this theme in the coming videos when we talk about the the national export initiative that Obama embarked on in 2010 and the second reason that he gave was to defend the dollar which is the ultimate end in this entire series is to help you understand what I mean by a currency war. So this is what he said is why we're doing it. You can actually Google his speech and we're going to take a quick excerpt and let's see if you can determine if there's something else involved besides these two points here. In full cooperation with the International Monetary Fund and those who trade with us, we will press for the necessary reforms to set up an urgently needed new international monetary system. Stability and equal treatment is in everybody's best interest. So there you go. The real reason is a new international monetary system. So obviously we don't have an international monetary system controlling all our lives as we stand in 2016. So it's been quite a while since 1971. So what's going on? And ultimately this video is really about gold. So what I want to do is walk you through some of the hills and valleys of gold and see if we can't determine some common denominators in this overall theme of this series. The first thing we need to understand is that central banks need to unhinge their currency from gold because we've talked about before what do central banks need they need inflation not only inflation in growth and demand in the economy but also inflating the what the currency so remember prior to 1971 the US dollar was pegged at $35 an ounce of gold what Nixon fundamentally did is turn this over to the IMF and allowed the IMF to do the pegging of currencies to gold. After Nixon did this, the IMF pegged gold to $42 an ounce, and this went on until 1979. So what happened to gold through this process and since? So as you can see, ever since the Bretton Woods Conference, 1944, gold did nothing but decline. 1971, the Nixon reversal, gold shoots up, the unpegging. The problem is once you take the governor off of something, it's difficult to control it. And you can see that not only did gold go up, but this is where we experienced the hyperinflation in the United States. The Jimmy Carter era, where interest rates went into the high double digits, and we know one of the basic fundamental principles of inflation is gold prices go up with inflation. So then you can see coming into the early 1980s, this is when Paul Volcker was the Federal Reserve Chairman. 
and he was determined to raise interest rates as high as possible, whatever it took to get inflation under control, to slay the dragon, and then in combination you had Ronald Reagan cutting taxes and regulation or to spur growth in the United States. So then we go through this enormous economic boom throughout the country, and Reagan and Volcker established the age of king dollar. So from basically 1980 through 2010, the U.S. told the world to anchor their currencies to the dollar because of its stability. But then in September 1999, you have what was called the Washington Gold Agreement. There were 17 central banks that got together, and their purpose was to control the sale of gold by central banks in order to not bring down the gold market. But in reality, what history and the data tell us now, looking back, is that the Washington Gold Agreement basically obliged central banks to sell from reserves in order to keep gold low. They actually implemented selling quotas for a five-year period of time. Why do they want gold low? Well, we're going to answer that in a few minutes. Then September 2004, there was what was called the WGA-2, the Washington Gold Agreement II, which brought new rules and included individual participants in the selling of reserves. And then in September 2009, WGA-3 was implemented, but there was an odd reversal where countries and central banks started buying from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and that basically occurred from 2009 through 2010. So through these agreements, you have central banks trying to control the price of gold, and it's not working. Gold is going through the roof. Why? Because individuals can do what they want. They don't have to follow the rules of the central bank. Then we have this reversal where central banks are buying from the IMF. The question is, why? Well, it comes back to the IMF and what are called SDRs, Special Drawing Rights. Now, I wrote two position papers on this in January and again in June of 2015. So, so if you want a full explanation on both currency wars and what's going on with IMF and SDRs, you can just reach out to us and order these and we'll send them to you. But an SDR is fundamentally the IMF currency. They don't call it a currency. You can go to the IMF website and they do everything but call it a currency. But at the end of the day, an SDR is made up of 25% of the following four currencies. The U.S. dollar, the British pound, the Japanese yen, and the euro. But there are two players that want in. And those two players are China and Russia. So if you're going to be included in the club, if you're going to be included in the club, you have to have a couple things. First, you need a stable economy. And you also need a stable currency. How do you reinforce stability in your currency? You do it through gold. Now, because oil prices have absolutely decimated not only the Russia economy, but also the ruble, they are not the focus right now. But Christine Lagarde, the chair of the International Monetary Fund at the end of 2015, declared that, yep, China, indeed, is going to be admitted into the club. They come in, they're supposed to come in in October 2016. So could an argument be made that gold is being purposely held low in order to allow China to accumulate as much as possible in order to come into the club, in order to perpetuate this overall theme of coordination between the central banks? China is an economic power. 30 years ago, they weren't even considered to be at the table as far as worldwide economic influence. Now they have massive muscle, and they need to be allowed in the club so the overall coordination of all the central banks can be accomplished. But the challenge to that is, as much as people want to try and convince us, China is not our friend. They are not our friend. And this is where the currency war is heating up. And so we're going to cover that in the home stretch of the remaining videos. The next video up is 
the market corrections we've been experiencing basically every seven or eight years. Then we're going to go into the National Export Initiative and finally wrap it up with what's going on with negative interest rates in the rest of the world and will they hit the shores of the United States? Big, big question mark. Okay, thanks for watching.